Um, lovely to see you. It's good to see you Always lovely to see you. Can you please let Susanna say something? Thank you yes. very much. <laughs> <laughs> it is good to see you. It's sad to see you in these circumstances. Um, this Gosport Hospital inquiry and the panel uh, concluded that hundreds of people had died because of this regime of, of painkillers. You now believe that your father may have been a victim at a, at a different hospital. Yeah, not of opiates, but um, antipsychotics, actually. Well, actually, a, a whole A4 list of drugs that I discovered my dad was on. Um, he had dementia, but he was still happy. He was still funny. He was still a pleasure to be with. He used to walk around the high street with me singing Patsy Cline's Crazy at the top of his <laughs> voice. And I used to say to people, no, he really is. He is. <laughs> So he was still fun to be around and he went missing, basically, and the police picked him up, bunged him in a specialist dementia care home, which I'd already looked at because inevitably that the time was going to come. Um, and he was in there a night, he was very unsettled, he was, very, you know, he was like a child, he was in a strange space and there was an aggressive episode and they, they bunged him on the mental health unit, basically. Mm -hmm. Police came to get him, bunged him on the mental health unit and I got him in there and I was happy that he was there. They seemed, they seemed wonderful, the unit was great, but every time I went to see him, he was sedated. He ballooned up in weight, which is a side effect of, of a particular antipsychotic. Mm. And he but your, was... your belief, Fiona, is that rather like this other scandal that we've been seeing harrowing stories about mm. the last mm. few days, that your father was given medication he didn't need, that he given too much, and it precipitated his early death. No, absolutely. Absolutely it precipitated his death every time I went there. And I was pleading with the staff, and I'm not blaming the staff. That mental health ward, as many around the country, was understaffed. Mm -hmm. And you've got people in there, their fights break out in there. They're, I mean, it's brutal in, on, on a mental health ward mm -hmm. because people are suffering from all sorts of psychoses and... And could pose he, a risk, I suppose that's absolutely. part of the problem, But, but so, I think, you know, there's sedation, but uh, antipsychotics, he was on all, he, he was on all sorts of things. He couldn't walk in the end. He was a dead lump. Is, and, and then he was dead. Is the issue, do you believe in your case, that he was given inappropriate medication in order to keep him sedated and that hastened his death? Yes. And if he'd been given better drugs, better treatment, he could have recovered to then be looked after in a care home, possibly. Yeah, and I'd planned that because he was still, you know, he was still had his sense of humour, he, he was still physically able. Um, but he just, he, well, I knew he was going to die. Every time I went to see him, it was worse. I pleaded with them, but mm. there were young girls manning this ward. There were staff leaving all the time. Mm. You know, I'm not blaming no, the, I get the, the staff.